Hello everyone, this is Nirbhum here and I welcome all of you to Saurabh Sus classes and hope you are having a nice time and enjoying the lecture. So today I will be discussing about the consumption decision. So what is all about this consumption decision? So what is all about this consumption decision? So uh, we know that a consumer has a given set of preferences and uh, for the consumption bundles and based on the set of preferences and the assumptions we should place on the preferences enables the consumer to make rankings of the consumer bundles which we have got and which of those consumer bundles these are those consumer bundles which are you know available in the consumption space and based on his ranking of the consumption bundles as well as the feasible set of consumption bundles which he can afford that means given his income and the constant prices for the goods on which he is going to spend his income and given the assumption that he will always consume non-negative amounts of all the goods, then we are able to get an, an optimal amount of consumption of all the goods which are always consumed. So this process of finding the optimal consumption bundle given the set of preferences based on the assumptions which you have made uh, as well as a feasible set is something which we term as the consumption decision. So how do we arrive at this consumption decision? So remember when we actually, so remember when we actually talk about this preferences, we represent this preferences mathematically in the form of a utility function. So utility function is nothing, uh, it's a mathematical function that assigns a particular number to any consumption bundle. So it is assigning a particular number to any consumption bundle which helps in some sort of and representation of the preferences in an ordinal sense. That means in ranking. So the difference between the numbers representing to different consumption bundles per se has got no meaning. It is only for the ordinal purpose. So basically when we talk about choosing the optimal consumption bundle, we actually mean we actually need to maximize the objective function. So this objective function is nothing but the utility function. So what is this? you know the objective function. This objective function is nothing but the utility function that is x1 so utility function comprises of all the goods which you are consuming in the uh, you know which you are consuming in the market. Okay? So this is nothing so this utility function is the mathematical representation of the pre, uh, mathematical representation of the preferences for this uh, goods and the bundles that are concentrated in the non-negative amounts of each of these goods that is x1, x2, xj and then we, dis we maximize this objective function which is nothing but the utility function subject to the constraint posed by the feasible set. So what is the constraint posed by the feasible set? The constraint posed by the feasible set is nothing but this that is the expenditure on all these uh, items, I mean the goods in a given consumption bundle should not should be less than or equal to the income at the hand of the consumer. So where I is nothing but, so this can be written again as PI of XI summation, I equal to Z in J is less than equal to N. That means where I is 1, 2, 2, G. So we basically try to maximize this objective function subject to the budget constraint or the feasible set constraint. Now, uh, when we talk about the representation, so we can you know, to begin with, we can show a graphical representation of this consumption decision, that is the optimal consumption decision. So how does it happen? So on horizontal axis we have got good one, on the vertical axis we have got good two. Okay. Now uh, we know that we can represent the consumer's preferences through something which uh, graphically through indifference curves. So indifference curves are nothing but the locus of those points of, of those consumption bundles which gives the same level of satisfaction or the same level of utility to a consumer given his preferences and ranking of the consumption bundles based on the assumption about the preferences. So we 
you can represent the utility function. So this utility function is nothing but the graphical. So this indifference curve, sorry, this indifference curve is nothing but the graphical representation of those utility functions, which is again a mathematical representation of function from the representation of the consumer preferences. So in a way, then is an indifference curve is nothing but representation of the consumer preferences. So these are our indifference curves. So what we know about this indifference curve, so to make assumptions which you have about this indifference curve is more is better. That means preferences, that means monochronicity, that is more is better. That means if you have got more amount of one board, uh, given that there is a reduction in the amount of the other board, then that consumption bundle will be more preferred to the original consumption bundle. And second, the averages or the weighted uh, average of uh, is always preferred to the extremes. So this is our consumption. Uh, indifference curves I1, I2, and I3 and higher and more away the indifference curves and further away the indifference curves from the origin O, they represent higher level of utility satisfaction. Okay. Now we draw a given budget line. So now we are drawing a budget line. Deciding to 
increase our consumption. So we all know that we are not deciding to increase our uh, consumption of good one. Let's say we have received a certain amount of money. No? So we are not deciding to increase our consumption of good one by an amount, let's say, one unit. Okay? So this is the amount which we are increasing one unit. So if we are increasing a consumption of good one by one unit, then the amount which we need to pay is P1. Okay? So this is the P1 amount of expenditure which we are making behind one unit of consumption of good one. Now, the marginal utility which we get is given by U1. So, the marginal utility of expenditure, that means the per unit utility, per unit, uh, uh, utility, that is the utility that we get per unit of expenditure on good one, is given by this ratio, that is U1 by P1. Similarly, if we are expending on good two, that means we are increasing the consumption of good two by one unit, then the expenditure which we buy, the expenditure increases by P2, and hence the per unit, um, then hence the increase in marginal utility, uh, uh, marginal utility increase in marginal uh, increase in marginal utility, per unit increase in consumption behind good two is given by this unit, that is U2 by P. Now you are now in the consumer will keep on adjusting his consumption between these two goods, that is good one and good two, given his income, till he reaches a point where per unit, so where unit increase, you know, so where increase in marginal utility per unit increase in expenditure, then good one is equal to increase in marginal utility given per unit increase in expenditure and good. So that means if we now again rewrite this condition, we can write this as follows: that is u1 by u2 equal to p1 by p2, which we have already derived. That is at the point of equilibrium, that is the point of tangency between the budget line and as well as indifference curve. We are actually making optimal decision because only at this point the increase in margin utility given per unit increase in consumption behind good one is actually equal to the increase in marginal utility given per unit increase in expenditure on good two. Now what does this actually signify? That is U1 by P1 or U2 by P1. So this is nothing but, so this is nothing uh, uh, but uh, if we see, let's say if you are increasing our income by a uh, marginal amount, that means A is increasing but only marginal. Then we will be at the point of equilibrium. So when we are actually talking about equilibrium, so we will literally be in difference between consuming one unit of good one as well as one unit of good two. And this ratio is actually signified that is U1 by P1 or U2 by P2 is actually signifying your marginal utility of you know the expenditure. And why and when we are talking about the marginal utility of expenditure, essentially we actually mean so how we can incur extra expenditure? We can incur extra expenditure only by uh, you know changing our order. So we can incur expenditure only by uh, changing our consumption of, of both these goods. So technically speaking, so this ratio that is U1 by P1 is actually also denoting in some way or the other when we are making this expedition about the marginal utility of income. Okay. So this actually also denotes that is one by P1 or U2 by P2 is actually denoting at equilibrium the marginal utility of income. Now if we have to look about this thing in a different way, that is about the marginal utility of income, we can now consider a corner solution. That means where rather than the budget line being tangent to the difference or what the interference curve being tangent to the budget line or the yeah, budget line, the interference curve touches the uh, budget line at either of the 
to uh, at either of these uh, uh, two endpoints. That means it can classify the budget line either at the point where the budget line is intersecting the horizontal axis or at the point where the budget line is intersecting the or touching the vertical axis. So let us consider a situation where the budget line is intersecting, it is just touching, I am not saying intersecting, but it is touching the below the uh, uh, horizontal axis. So here this will be the shape of the budget line. So let us say here, yeah, these are the shape of the budget line. Thank you once again.